So what's up guys, Steven Bogman here from Pro Physique. Today, a couple things I wanna talk about. One, I wanna give you an update on what's been happening. And two, I wanna talk about non-exercise active thermogenesis or NEAT activity during a contest prep. So what's up guys, Stephen Bogrand here. I know it's been a minute, but we're back on the grind Tuesday, Wednesday, um, and we add it on that YouTube grind, right? So let's sort of talk a little bit about, um, you know, what's kind of been happening. And for those of you who don't give a shit, um, I'll put a little timestamp down uh, below about where I actually start talking about the real deal. So, but for those of you who know me, who are invested in me, um, who are probably my clients, you already know that this past weekend was a, it was a huge weekend in terms of accomplishing life goals. And so, <clears throat> you know, I finished up my master's degree. We had commencement on Saturday, which I chose not to go to. I went to a NGA Bill Mora promoted show over in Ormond Beach, Florida. Um, and won my natural pro card as a natural bodybuilder. So for those of you who've known me for years, you know I've done men's physique. I also did men's physique. I went up in the overall but lost. Um, <clears throat> but I decided to try out bodybuilding as I f felt that it gave me a, you know, a little bit better chance. I had more poses to win. Um, and honestly, I just thought it would be a little bit more fun. And I was right. I had a lot more fun well, up on stage doing bodybuilding. And uh, I won my pro card, so it paid off, I suppose. Um, but obviously that's the culmination of, you know, seven years straight of hard work for my master's degree and about the same amount of time uh, for uh, my bodybuilding career thus far. Uh, so for me, it was one of those things where <clears throat> it left me questioning what's next, what's next, what's next. So it'll be interesting to see what is next um, and what comes next down the road. But I will digress. Um, I feel like this topic really ties in well with that whole prep and bringing a better package and being able to be better than you were before. Um, and it's that non-exercise active thermogenesis, so neat activity and during prep, right? Because <clears throat> if you're like me, um, when prep gets, you know, even midway, energy levels start going down. Um, what was once easy to make time and energy for um, you know, is now no longer. Uh, at one point in prep, I think it took a vast amount of like psychological energy and determination just to get up off the couch at the end of the day. Um, and so one of those things that's really important for us to pay attention to during the prepping time is our non-exercise activity. So what do I mean when I talk about non-exercise activity? So here's what I mean. I mean, going for a leisurely stroll, a walk, walking the dog, uh, 10 minute post meal walks, um, <clears throat> playing your weekly volleyball game, like all of those things, right? All those things that are not accounted for in terms of your activity and cardio recommendations and outline that your coach is giving you. And let's talk about why it is that that is so very important. So, so the first thing that I really wanna, you know, sort of look at is it, it burns calories, right? And it is a calorie expenditure. If you walk the dog twice a day, seven days a week, you know, that's probably at the very least a couple extra hundred calories a week that we're now burning, okay? That's accounted for, right? So if that's something you've been doing, your metabolic, your overall metabolic profile has accounted for that. Which means if your coach is changing your food and cardio, that is part of the equation that it should be included in what needs to continue going on, right? We have to add to it. We can't take away if we want you to get leaner. And so if we cut out that activity, well then here, what happens is we now are utilizing that many less calories throughout the week. So whatever coach cut out of our diet, and whatever coach may have added in cardio wise, like it is now evened out by the fact that we stopped doing something else that burned calories throughout the week. And so 
what happens is, is as those energy levels come down, our normal activity goes away and we see plateaus even with changes. This is a lot of times can be explained simply by the fact that we're not putting out the same amount of energy that we were the week prior before a cut, okay? Now, I really wanna get into what is the big difference between knee activity and cardio, okay? So even if you have low intensity steady state cardio, and I've seen different coaches do this different ways, some of them use heart rate, some of them use like an RPE, some of them use, you know, that how you're feeling and that less objective measure, as outlines, <clears throat> but even a light intensity steady state cardio still has a set intensity that you have to do. And if you haven't already, you know, gone over this, I did another video a little while ago um, on this exact same topic, right? And so when we're talking about our cardio recommendations, that means that our heart rate or our activity, our intensity level needs to be above a certain threshold. So say this is my threshold, I need to be at least right here to be making it on that cardio recommendation in time, right? So maybe a 10 minute leisurely stroll or post meal walk doesn't do it. Maybe walking the dog doesn't do it. Maybe jogging the dog does it. Maybe, you know, a little, a bike ride does it, but uh, you know, it's all going to be individually dependent, right? And there are different ways to do it, right? You can recommend heart rate and you can do that by maximal heart rate and just go by 220 minus your age and a percentage based on that. You can do heart rate reserve, which is where you take maximal heart rate minus your resting heart rate. So the ways that you can do this, there's a lot of them, right? And there's a lot of different ways, but the one big fact, the one truth stays the same is that there has to be a bottom threshold for that cardio intensity, for it to be counting as something that is going to be okay in terms of utilizing it in your steady state cardio recommendations during prep. So the really big thing is, is that we're accountable not only to the dietary guidelines that our coaches have given us, and not only to the cardio recommendations that our coaches have given us, but to the overall calorie expenditure that we've had beforehand. Go lay down! because these are all things that are going to impact how we respond during a contest prep, okay? So if you've been walking the dog, keep walking the dog. If you've been going for post-meal walks, keep going for post-meal walks. If you've been playing volleyball, keep playing volleyball. Like these things are all important in terms of getting you stage lean. Because remember, stage lean is not somewhere your body wants to be. Your body's built for survival, okay? Survival, is not guaranteed with very low body fat, right? That very low body fat is there as a cushion, ha ha. ha. Um, but it literally, it's a metabolic cushion so that our body has stored energy if we go into a time where we don't have food intake coming in, okay? So remember, keep up the activity. It is vastly important in terms of a successful contest prep, right? That's all I have for today, guys. I hope everything goes great for you. Let's have a great rest of the week. I'll talk to you soon.